Hi, my name is Eduardo Garcia and I'm a computer engineer. I work in Barcelona for more than a decade in jobs related to computer science. But at some point I felt I wasn't passionate about it. So I decided to change my life. My girlfriend and I both quit our jobs and moved to Southeast Asia. First, we went to Myanmar and stayed in a Buddhist monastery for some time. And then we did some traveling and ended up settling in Bali, where I became a scuba dive instructor. Bali is a small island in the Indonesian archipelago. And I think it's a special place on Earth. The whole island is bustling with arts and crafts, music, dancing, painting, sculpture, you name it. The whole island lives for the art. But it's the people and their culture what will conquer your heart. The Balinese, they live in a communal society. For them, being part of the community, it is more important than the individuality. In fact, in the old times, the most severe penalty someone could get, it wasn't death. It was being expelled from the community. The Balinese, they are born, they live, they pray, and they die together. For them, the life is tightly tied to the life of the others. Some people consider Bali a paradise on earth. But once you live there, you see that not everything is perfect. There are many problems in Bali as well. Environmental problems. The island cannot handle all the garbage it produces. The local communities are fighting against illegal fishing to protect the marine life. And there are other troubles like economical, social. After living there for a few years, we felt it was time to move. But before leaving, I wanted to give something back. I felt in depth with these wonderful people who have given me so much. But how could I do it? How could a single person try even to solve partially any of the problems of this island? Some of the problems of Bali have been created or worsened by the overdevelopment caused by tourism. While I was there, I met many people, many tourists who felt in love with the island. This beautiful place where it's full of happy people who are always smiling. But they couldn't see the problems in the island. And some of them, they could see some but they didn't know how to help. I mean, after all, they were in holidays, you know, taking pictures for Instagram, etc. There are more than four million visitors who are coming to Bali every year. And don't get me wrong, I don't think of them as a problem. I think they can be part of the solution. Because if just a small fraction of these people who visit Bali every year would do it in a way that supports the local communities, that will create a huge impact. But how can we create the awareness needed for that? I think that arts and images are a powerful channel 
for conveying ideas. Then I thought that a documentary could be a great way of showing some of the problems that are happening in Bali. But I had no previous experience. I was not a filmmaker and I have never made a film, not even of my holidays or my brother's wedding. So how could I do it? I think that if you search for an excuse, you will find it. It is very easy to find the reason why not to do something. But at the same time, I think that if you search for a way, you will find it as well. So I just bought a camera, bought a microphone, bought a laptop, and I learned myself how to film. I got in touch with Kupu Kupu Foundation. It's an NGO that has been working for the last decades to help the disabled kids of Bali on offering them a better future. Thanks to Begoña Lopez, the founder of the NGO, we explained how they work through the life of four of the people who were helped by the foundation. Guayan Putri, Nenga, Ketut, and Guayan Ginawi. We thought their story was worth telling. Today, I'm presenting the film Sons of Bali. We're going to see a clip, a short clip, that tells the story of Guayan Putri. This girl was born deaf mute and she couldn't go to the school because there are no programs for disabled in Bali. So she basically had to create her own sign language in order to communicate with her family. Even her sister is deaf mute as well. Now she makes a living by waving hangings that she sells in the shop of the foundation. So let's see the clip. Ibu, 